Today I wanted to find out how quickly we can actually build a personalized application just using Cursor AI. So let me just draw up some kind of idea I have here now. So I'm going to show you what we are going to build today. So basically what I'm looking for is just a very simple, I think we're just going to do it in the browser app, right? So I've seen this uh, kind of study apps, what they call it. They have these two buttons here and they have kind of this countdown. So I think they call this like the Pomodoro technique. So I think there are like 25 minutes and there's like a, I think it's a five minute break, right? And they have like a start or stop or something like button. For the UI, I thought we can make this pretty simple. I just want this in browser. I only want to use HTML, I think. So that's going to be very easy to set up. Uh, so I basically just want like a text input it so we can put in like Hello, we will get like a response back, let's say from GPT-40. Uh, I think we're going to use this in this case. But I want to be able to set like a topic, right? That I want to learn about. Let's say in our case, it's going to be, yeah, Python, right? So I want to give some instructions here. Uh, so let's say uh, we want always kind of the structure here to be that... Uh, AI is gonna give us some kind of Python code snippet here, right? And then we're gonna respond with, uh, we're gonna explain that code snippet, and the AI is gonna confirm, right? If that was correct, and we can kind of iterate back and forward here, right? To see if we actually can learn something from that code snippet. So that's gonna be a very simple UI. We're going to use some tricks that I'm going to show you in Cursor to set this up the easiest way. And this is going to be a smooth experience to set this up. We're going to have the timer working as intended, like we can stop, play, and let this run down. So we kind of get this, I think they call it, yeah, like I said, the Pomodoro technique of studying. So let's just get straight into Cursor. I'm going to show you some few setups that could make this much more easy to do. So yeah, let's just get started. If you haven't tried this idea first, just go to cursor.com and download this. Should be pretty easy to set up. I don't have any affiliation with them, but I just like the product. So go there, download it and set up your free trial account. And when you have done that, you can just head into Cursor, right? So yeah, it's basically like a VS Code Studio. Uh, pretty easy to set up, to be honest. Shouldn't be too hard, right? So when you get in here, we can just go to our terminal, right? I just want to make like a folder here. Uh, I don't know what we're going to call it. Let's just do MK and just call it uh, study. Right? Directory, study. Uh, okay. And let's just open this folder here, right? So hopefully now we can find this here. So I'm just going to open that. And that should be all we kind of need for now. So let me show you a trick here now. When you are in to cursor we can do something called here and go to settings and there's something called rules for ai right and here is almost like the system instruction for your setup so what i went ahead and did i went to the open ai api here documentation text generation and let's grab this simple explanation here of the kind of update the documentation to kind of create a call to the open ai uh, i did select javascript here for now but uh, you can do both Python and JavaScript, doesn't really matter. And you can see I both pasted into the documentation here, both JavaScript and the Python setup. So that is all I'm going to bring in now. And since we are going to use the Composer feature today, just go to Features. And on the top here, there's something called Composer. So just enable that, right? Uh, that is uh, something we're going to be using today. So just do that and we should be ready to go. Uh, and now we're going to use something called a composer. So we're just going to do control shift and I. And this kind of brings up this composer here. Uh, now we're just going to prompt it to get started on our application. So let me just uh, come up with a prompt here and let's run it. So the prompt we're going to use is uh, I want to create a browser application in HTML that has a retro terminal style. The application is a study chatbot that uses the OpenAI API from the OpenAI documentation. So I reference that here. The response uh, must be streamed. The styling must have good contrast and readability. The system message uh, in the API should be set like a Python code tutor that gives the user code snippets and try to explain or ask related questions. 
The code snippets can be displayed in like a markdown code block. Also have a Pomodoro timer on the bottom right of the application, please. Now generate an HTML browser app and save the generated index.html, right? So what we're gonna do now is just click enter and let this run and I'll take you back when we have something. Okay, so now you can see we have kind of a full HTML code here. We have some uh, JavaScript in here that is actually using the GPT-4 Omini. So this is kind of taken from the documentation we added. Uh, you can see we have a system prompt. You're a Python code tutor. Provide uh, some code snippets. Use markdown code blocks. Okay, perfect. And you can see we actually need to kind of... Uh, there's something. It's an API key here that we need to use. Right, so let's ask, where can I place my API key? So while we wait for that, we can go over to OpenAI here. And there's something in the dashboard here that's called API keys. And here uh, you have to create a new key or just use an existing one to kind of slot into this uh, place. Uh, so we can actually use the model, right? So if you don't have that, you can register on OpenAI or just use another API key if you want to use some uh, other provider, right? That doesn't matter too much. Uh, but if we go back here now, you can see there are somewhere here we should place in an API key, right? So you can see we got to find this const API key. So if we scroll down here, right? Uh, I think it should be somewhere here, yeah? Const API key. So we can insert my OpenAI API key here. So I'm just going to go grab my API key and slot it in here. Of course, you could just set this in your environment if you wanted to, but this is going to be a local app, so I'm not too bothered about that. So let me just grab my key and slot it in here. Okay, so I did that. I saved the application, but now let's take a look at how this looks now. So we can just click on the file here, uh, open with live server. This is going to take us to our browser. Okay, this is looking pretty cool, right? We have our Pomodoro here, so does it work? Yeah, that started. We have pause. I kind of want to have the five minute pause thing. We can add that later. So here we can kind of type now. It doesn't, we can zoom in a bit. Yeah, that scales pretty well. So let's just go, hello. Uh, I want to learn about for loops, right? Or something. Okay, so we got an instant response. We got the markdown. I like that. What do you like to know about this? What will it print? Ah, okay, so now I see, so the issue we have now is we don't have any memory here, so you can see the chatbot did not remember the, pre the previous message, so we gotta fix that. Now we can actually go back to cursor, and let's do like a shift I, right? And let's follow up with a question here, so let me just come up with a prompt here. So I'm just gonna type, so this app don't have memory of the conversations now, we need to keep the conversation in context of previous messages implement this change please so again just enter and hopefully this is gonna come up with a way we can actually store the previous messages and feed them back in as context so we kind of get like a coherent experience when we are using our app right so we're just gonna let this write a new code we're gonna save it and then we're gonna try it again so you can see we are adding the user's message to something called conversation history here and that looks pretty good so I'm just going to let this run through and then we're going to apply this and see if this helps us. Okay, so I'm just going to accept this. I'm going to go back here and let's ask the same questions. I want to learn about for loops. So we get a snippet. What question do you have about this code? Uh, what will it print? Okay, so now you can see, you can see now we got the coherence, right? Because we know this example. And the code will print each fruit in the fruit list of the new line. The output will be apple, banana, and cherry. Perfect. Would you like to see another example of a for loop? Yes, please. Use uh, type int. What questions do you have about this code? Explain how this works. Okay, so we get an explanation. Do you have more questions? So you kind of get the idea right. And you can see our start is working here. Yeah, that's good. I think we need some kind of button here, maybe around here that kind of clears the full conversation. I think that's pretty smart. So let's try to add that. And also maybe add this five minute break timer here. 
So we're just gonna go back again, control I, go back to our composer and let's do like a new instruction here. I'm just gonna do like one feature at a time. So let's do like the Pomodoro timer step. So uh, next step, add a five minute break timer for the Pomodoro timer. The timer starts when the 25 minute block is over. This runs for five minutes and gives a small alarm, five seconds when the break is over. The user can then start the 25 minutes again. Okay, so let's try to implement this first. And then we do like the clear conversation button, right? Okay, so we can see we have some instructions here. We added an is break boolean to track where in a working session or a break. The start uh, timer function, we added a play alarm function. So I'm going to set the, the timer down to one minute to actually test that. But now let's just accept this, right? Uh, let's go back to our code here. So I'm just going to set the, the working uh, time to one minute now, so we can actually test the alarm setup, right? Okay, so I put this one to one minute, I think. If we go back to our app now, yeah, perfect. So this is one minute now. So I'm just going to let this run down, and then we're going to check at the end here if we actually get this alarm and the five minute break uh, switches over. So let's just test this out. Okay, so we got about five seconds left. Just put, let me put on this. I don't even know if I'm gonna hear any alarm, but let's listen now. Okay, so we just get this message. Okay, so that was maybe not... Okay, so the alarm, the break started. That was at least good. But I couldn't hear any alarm. Maybe that is when this timer runs out. Um... Okay, so let's. I'm just gonna let this run down to one minute and let's hear if we get an alarm. So I, like, I guess I'll be back in like four minutes. Okay, so there's about six seconds left. So let's see if we get any alarm now. Okay, so I heard a small beep. Uh, I guess that was fine. <laughs> uh, but if you click start now, yeah, we can continue back on the one minute timer. So yeah. That worked out pretty good, the alarm was a bit underwhelming, but that's fine for now. We can always add a new sound file if we wanted to. Uh, but now let's move on to put this back onto 25 minutes and add like a clear conversation button. I think it's gonna be the last uh, integration I want in this. So again, let's go back to the composer. Let me just do like a new instruction here to kind of add the clear conversation button and let's try it again. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep it simple. The final feature I want is a button to clear the current conversation to start a new one. Can you please implement this feature into uh, the app, please? Just enter that. And hopefully now we can get like a simple UI button that we can click to kind of clear the conversation and start a new one. So let's see if that uh, is gonna work here. So you can see we're gonna reset the conversation history and we're gonna clear the output display, clear the input field. Yeah, that sounds pretty much exactly what I wanted. So let's just let this apply and then we're gonna do a, like a final test of our tutor app, study app. I want to call it so yeah let's just test this okay let's just accept this go back here uh, and also let me just add back to 25 minutes uh, so let's go to the app now and see if that is how this is gonna work okay so you can see the clear conversation button was down here but that could be okay so let's just try it out now uh, hello uh, I want to learn uh, about arrays What would you like to learn? I think this button placement is a bit... Yeah, that's not good placement. Uh, I think we want to move it straight over the, the button here, right? Want to move it straight over here. So let's try to do that. So I'm just going to go move the clear conversation button with a gap 2 over the Pomodoro timer, please. Enter. And hopefully we can get us the quick implementation here and just accept that and go back to see if this is going to work. Okay, so let's just accept that and go back to my app here. Uh, okay, that kind of missed. <laughs> uh, so let's do a small adjustment. So I just said that did not work. It crashed into a timer. Let's adjust it a bit more up uh, above. If this is not going to work now, we're just going to do it manually here, right? Okay, so let's take a look. Yeah, that looks much, much better. So let's try now. Oh, I want to learn about arrays. Okay, so we get a snippet. What you'd like to know about this? What will uh, this print? So you can kind of see we are in the same style here, right? So, uh, okay, clear. Perfect. And now we kind of clear that. Let's try again. Okay, so let's do ask me a quiz. Uh, 
about, I don't know, for loops, something like this. Uh, what does this code do when executed? So you can see uh, fruits, we have a list for fruit in fruits, print fruit. So I guess it's gonna be print apple, banana, and cherry. That's correct. So you can see, print the list. Here's another code snippet for you to work on. What will we have? So you can see, okay, we didn't like this. Let's clear this. You can start over again. We can start this. So I think that was basically our app completed. Really enjoyed playing around with this uh, composer, right? So I definitely recommend trying that out. You can easily just create your own personalized apps now that is highly customizable to your needs. Say, let's say you wanted to, let's say, let's try to just switch this up completely now and just uh, say you didn't want to learn about Python. Let's say you wanted to learn about the history of the World War II. So let's try to do that just quickly. So we can do in the system content, you are a World War II expert and a tutor. You are helping a student learn about World War II. Uh, give the student a quiz, quiz after each lesson. Moving on to the next lesson, the student should answer the quiz in the chat. Uh, yeah, so let's just try to switch up that completely. Okay, so this was for the conversation history. We need to go up here and also add this up in our main part here, right? So let's paste in that. Let's go back here. Let's refresh. Let's start from the beginning of VV2. So we get like a lesson, right? And we get like a quiz. What event considered official start of World War II? Uh, okay, and we can try to answer this, right? Uh, so let's say one invasion of Poland. I don't know. Two, I don't know. Yeah, you get the point. So uh, invasion of Poland, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, you can you can see you can turn this uh, to whatever you want it to be, right? Uh, that is gonna be kind of your study subject. So I thought it was pretty cool, and I think this could be helpful uh, if you are studying something. And you could of course also add your own context. We could have created like a new file here, context, right? And added in some bunch of context from some kind of uh, yeah something you wanted to learn, right? So it should be pretty flexible this app. So I thought it was pretty cool. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Go check out Cursor. Check out the Composer feature. I think this is uh, a new part of software development. I am gonna embrace hard right because it just saves me a time and lets me be creative and create all the stuff I kind of have in my head. So yeah, thank you for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed it. And the code will be available just in the description if you want to try it out for yourself. Thank you for tuning in. Have a great day and we speak soon.